let's say in the next two weeks, we're, we're fortunate and we have $2,200 gold. Where do you see silver being, Chris? You know, I, I really don't think we're going to see a 2200 by the end of June on. Um, <laughs> I really don't. I'm sorry to burst your bubble. We have a special guest and we have some extraordinary developments in the silver market, in the gold market that we are going to talk about. It was a big week with the Fed. Gold still hovers within striking distance of new all-time highs. We're going to talk about that, but a whole lot more with our good friend and returning guest, Coin Shop Chris. Welcome back to Ron's Basement. Well, Ron, thank you again for having me back in the basement, along with the gold beer and Smitty there. <laughs> well, you're, a, you're, you're one of our most esteemed guests. So, Chris... This was a big week. I made it out to be the biggest week in the history of the universe for gold and silver, but it didn't quite turn out that way. We had the Federal Reserve issue their most recent monetary policy statement. Any thoughts on your good friend? I know you're a huge fan of Jerome Powell. Any thoughts on, uh, on how things transpired this week? Uh, I, I'm trying to not laugh, Ron. <laughs> um, the, the guy is a crook, but, um, you, you know, we, we figured we we're going to get this pause on, you know, you, you, you and I have a talk off camera about this. And, um, I, I think we're going to see one more pause in July. Then I, I think we're going to see rate, starting to see rates raised back in August. Um, no, excuse me. It won't be August. It'll be September because August is a break. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, but it's also interesting to point out, Chris, and I think something we need to remember, gold in particular is still within striking distance of an all-time high. Gold is only like 5.5% away from an all-time high. What do, you, what do you make of that? We, you know, um, we could see it in the next couple of weeks, Ron. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Um, but like like you said, we are awfully close. And with all this stuff going on all over the world, you know, these banks are still buying up gold. These central banks are still buying up gold, silver. Um, you, you know, we, we really could see a run here. And i just like to take a moment, Ron. You know, you have done wonders for your viewers. So if everybody can just like this video, share, and subscribe, we need to get this information out. The more we can get the information out, the better we all going to be. Well, that's so, that's nice. That's a I'm I'm flattered that you say that, Chris. And you know that I and the viewers think the world of you. If the viewers want to give Chris a little shout out in the comment section, that would be great as well. When it comes to silver, as we're talking about this potential, look, I may be dead. My, I, you know, I said twenty two hundred dollar gold by the end of June. It looks like I'm going to be wrong, right? Because the Fed communicated kind of, oh, we're going to raise rates more. We're going to raise rates more. There's something in my uh, intuition telling me that we got a chance still in the next couple of weeks that gold goes to 2200. And what do you think silver would be at if, let's say in the next two weeks, we're, we're fortunate and we have $2,200 gold. Where do you see silver being, Chris? You know, I, I really don't think we're going to see a 2200 by the end of June on. Um, I really don't. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but um, could it happen? Yes. I mean, I, I can't say it won't happen, but more likely it's not going to happen. I, I think by the end of June, I think we're going to be very, very close to the all-time all high. Silver, we, we could see a spike back to 26 very quickly. Uh, yeah. Well, I said, if it got to 2,200, where do you think silver would be? <laughs> If it got to twenty two hundred, you still be you probably. I mean, this like I said, I I'm not gonna say this is gonna happen, but you could see silver twenty nine thirty thirty one. Yeah, yeah. I know you're not. You're not. I'm the one who's saying that. My have an intuition. I'm also not saying that I any longer think that it's really likely to happen, but I think it could. And I just got this little little bit of feeling in my gut that it uh, that it might might just. Uh, might just occur. It's going to be interesting how things play out. I do think that once we do get to all-time highs on gold, silver, I think two things are going to happen. Two key big things, and, and gold is the catalyst. 
when gold gets to a new all-time high, when it gets to that 2150, 2200 range, it's going to move from there to 2600 in a flash. And 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 then I'm going to let you I'm going to let you talk, but I want to add this as well. Silver is going to be like a like a ricochet. Uh, you know what I mean? Like it's just it's going to it's going to take off at the same time. I, I feel like the I feel like the uh, here I got this. Let me show you this real quick. I feel like everything. This is an old wind up toy that was my dad's. It was made in Japan. Where's the thing? There's a thing on here. Oh, here it is. And you wind it up and you wind it up and you wind it up. It it feels like, you know, like the like the like the coil has been tightened so much for gold and silver. Chris, what do you think about that? Once we hit these numbers, Ron, you're absolutely right. But I, I what I think when I'm watching, when that does happen, you're gonna see swings like we never seen before. And what I mean by that, fifty dollar swings in gold. One day maybe up fifty dollars, next day maybe down fifty, sixty bucks, and we're gonna go right back up. It's gonna be that game for a while, I believe, and I think you're gonna see price swings of silver three to four, even five dollars a day price swings. Yeah, and and, yeah. and people are not gonna know either to buy, cash in, take some profits off the table. It's gonna be like that for a while, I think. And when when is when is that day gonna come? We don't know. Right. Right. Um, now we also have to be. Well, go ahead. I'm sorry, Chris. That is the thing that we need to just keep keep an eye on with the interest rates. And and I want to warn everybody again: it is it's not. You know, I know I preached this before. You know, the banks are going to say, "Oh, look, the Fed um, pause. The interest rates are not going to go up." I, I just it's really not advisement. I just want to warn everybody. You know, we, Ron put a movie out on his um can this chameleon cage about the 2008 fi financial crisis here um it's worth the watch it's free no charge to anybody um it's just a copy link and it's worth the hour and a half of your time and i just like to tell everybody there is some language in it so if you have young kids you may not want to hear them saying the f-bomb mm -hmm. so like um, last like last weekend when i called you and had you on speakerphone and my daughter was sitting next to me and she heard you say the s-word the one that it, one the one that rhymes with what does it rhyme with? Any words? Hit, Chris. That's right. Yeah, I messed up, <laughs> but I think I think I think you told me a little story all came in, which I won't be just repeat. You said that many of times. She, I think I, I don't think that was the first time she heard it. No. She may have, may have even said it a couple times prior to uh, prior yeah. to our prior to our conversation. Um, summer is typically a slow time for silver and gold. Let's be prepared for that as well. Feels like things are, uh, even the news flow has started to slow down. Um, you know, I read something interesting earlier today about solar demand and silver. And China is just sucking up the world's silver. And what, there's, there's an estimate that by the year 2050, Silver at that, that point could be, uh, I'm sorry, solar could be consuming 98% of the world's silver reserves. It's just incredible. And the Chinese are starting to make a lot of noise about it as well. Um, any thoughts on that, Chris? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, we, we need silver for everything. Any device you, you're on, it's got silver in that de de device, medical equipment, solar pan panels, you know. Um, you know, a lot of governments want to go to the Green New Deal. Well, we need silver. We need copper. You know, we really don't need gold for this type of stuff. It's silver and copper. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I mean, do you, you know, silver will come into play. It's just, it, it, it's a matter of when, Ron. Yeah. <clears throat> well, the, the Chinese state media has some reports out where they were interviewing like the heads of these silver smelters and the guys at the silver smelters the managers were like we can't keep up with the demand for silver and then they were even kind of ripping on the united states and how the price is too low and that it's determined by like goofy factors like interest excuse me interest rates and uh jobs numbers and they were laughing uh, and then there was even an open letter written to one of the Chinese news agencies that I read that recommended that, 
that silver derivatives, you know, like those uh, paper contracts written on the COMEX and the LBMA, that they be classified as like financial fraud crimes. Uh, the Chinese are making some serious noise when it comes to silver. Well, the Chinese are right. I mean, you know, there's 300 and some contracts for every one ounce of silver silver they have in the vault, Ron. Yeah. So what? So what does that? Some, so that tells me someone's not going to get their silver. And most of these contracts, if you read the fine print, they don't pay you in silver. They pay you cash. Mm -hmm. I mean, so why? Why are people buying these contracts up? Why aren't they going out paying a few dollars more over spot for silver rounds? Let's say, and get physical silver in in their hands. It makes no sense. Yeah, it does. It does make I mean, I mean, it's just astounding when you look at the supply demand dynamics in the silver market right now. Um, I read something earlier today, right, that like the last two years, we've had massive deficits. We've had we've had way more silver demanded, like hundreds of millions of ounces more demanded uh, than was produced by the mines. And that the last two years that that deficit is like basically sucked up all the surplus that was created during the previous 11 years. So maybe we are, Chris, maybe maybe we're not as far away from the $85 silver that you're calling for than we, than, you know, we might be closer than we think. You know, people like to give us a hard time throwing out these $85 numbers, $100 silver on. But, you know, I, I really don't think with that, crazy um you know we, we hit uh, speak for yourself <laughs> well maybe i'm more crazy than you are Ron. You I, don't know, know. I guess i guess the last few comments that we got there's a few people in the comments that call us the, a bunch of clowns now so oh, you know yeah. that's right. that's fine i guess i i guess you're the clown i'll be the clown junior here now i'm the um, mo ron i'm the i'm the i put the ron and mo ron mm -hmm. and i'm from missouri <laughs> so i'm mo Hey, they That's can say like, what they they can say what they want. I don't know. I hear Keith Newmeyer, the CEO of First Majestic Silver, probably one of the most respected people in the precious metals sector, talk about triple digit silver. Uh, I hear the Chinese talking about the need for triple digit silver. Yeah. Hey, I don't. You know, look. I, I and you and I talk about this. We we get a lot of great the people watching us right now. 99% of them are awesome, great people. <clears throat> and the other 1% uh, are still awesome, great people. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. But, you know, the people get like really bent out of shape, like, oh, you're saying $61 silver or $85 silver. Well, hey, look, that's what I that's what I think we are going to see. And I'm not talking like 25 years from now. I could see that happening in the next several years. And, you know, before we get to $100 silver, we got to get to 61 or 45 or all those numbers in between. Exactly. And, you know, people complain about these numbers and saying, well, if silver goes up, everything else is going to go up with it. Well, that didn't quite happen in 1980, Ron. That didn't right. quite happen in 2011. So I mean, could, now we got we didn't have the high inflation in 2011. Of course, could stuff start going up? Well, the dollar, people think, um, you know, it, it, the the cost of silver is going up. No, it's your dollar gaining less and less valuable. Yeah, yeah. You, well, you I, know, people, I've said this be I've said this before, Ron. People don't complain when they go into Wal Walmart or your grocery store or wherever. The price is up 25%. You know, why aren't we yelling at these stores and saying why are these prices are so high? But yeah. people want people want to complain about the silver price being four or five dollars over spot. Well, that's the current market right now. That's your silver price. Yeah. I mean, you you know, five, five dollars when 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 silver does take off, that five dollar premium ain't gonna matter when silver hits 30, 35 plus. It's most people are going to start profiting around 30 bucks, Ron. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we, people actually forget. You know, today's price, you know, you can get a good ounce of silver, silver about 28 bucks. Well, once it goes to 30 bucks, 
you've only profited and we're not that far off. Right. You know, right. Well, I, well, I think it's important for people to remember as well when they think about the value of their silver. Let's say the price of food, you know, that we do get into a situation where food inflation, for instance, gets out of control. And let's say on average, a loaf of bread or meat or whatever goes up in price by four times, right? Well, maybe your silver at minimum would keep up with it, right? But maybe your silver goes up 20 times <laughs> or 10 times. It's the relative value. And like you said, back in times like 2011 and some of the other more pre or, uh, yeah, previous times, there is a, 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 an outweighed uh, appreciation uh, in the value of silver. And, you know, that's a point where people might think about converting some to other things, other real assets, for instance. You know, exactly, Ron. And, you know, this is why we talk about the um, 40 percent. I, I do have a deal of the week, too, Ron. But, um, OK, yeah, go ahead. Let's hear your deal of the week. You know, I'll, let me just touch on the 40 percent of half, you know, the 40 percent half this half dollar. I've seen a lot of comments all day, not worth the money, blah, blah, blah. Well, let me just put this out to everybody. I think everybody should have a couple rolls because if if the dollar does go goodbye and we start trading in silver and gold, and you know, I'm not saying that's going to happen anytime soon, but at thirty dollars silver, your your forty percent is going to melt for four forty four. At fifty dollars silver, they're going to melt for seven thirty eight. At eighty five dollars silver is twelve fifty seven, and I'm going to go out on a extra women at a hundred dollars silver run they're going to melt for 1479 and wow. i'm getting them i'm getting them on ebay i just got a lot of a hundred which i'm splitting with a friend um he's gonna take 50 i'm gonna take 50 i i, I got them for 369 a coin okay they melt, okay they melt for 352 so i mean 11 cents over the melt per coin i think that's a pretty gosh darn good deal right right what about um, uh, what about silver and gold prices lately? Do you have any info on that by chance? Chris? Yeah, I do that. Let me get the deal of the week first, and then I will get to that for you, if, okay. if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going to send everybody back to Liberty Coin now. Again, I don't make a dime off this. There's no link in the description. Ron's not making no money off this. Um, they're the Germania Mint five ounce bars. Currently, right now, they're one forty four eighty nine per five ounce bar. That comes to be twenty eight ninety eight per an ounce. That's underneath your thirty dollar threshold that 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 I use. It's mm -hmm. a good buy. Yeah, um, those are nice bars too, right? I got I got four of them, Ron. I got them a little bit cheaper, and I paid twenty eight fifty early in the week because silver was down a little bit more. Now silver's gone up. The the of course this is going to go up too. But okay. uh, like I said, you can get an ounce of silver for less than thirty bucks. Um. It's it's to me it's a steal. Okay. What about so, the prices uh, over the last what thirty days? You have some data on the that last, for us? The last thirty days, I'm going to read them right in. Um, um, from worst to the best this week. Um, Bitcoin was your worst um investment this week. Um, it was down six hundred ninety two dollars and ninety two cents, or two point five six percent. Gold came in second. Gold was still down this past thirty days. It was down $21.80 or 1.9%. And silver is your winner. We actually have an up for the last 30 days in silver at 23 cents or 0.98%. So silver gained almost 1% this past month, the last 30 days. Huh, that's interesting. Um, yeah. So very, very interesting. Um, you know, people can do what they want with their bit, this Bitcoin or crypto or um. I'll, I'll ask again, how, how are you going to use it when this, when the power goes out? <laughs> I know you love Bitcoin I love and it. cryptocurrency. We're going to start calling you Crypto Chris. Well, <laughs> I, I I must love it so much because I own none of it. <laughs> how would you know, right? Do I have some? That, I think I see some floating around down here in my basement. Well, um, that, that gold bar that, that beer is hanging on to, Ron, is more real than Bitcoin. I don't know, but not by much, not <laughs> yeah. by much. That, that is, that is, that, that is pure. That's made from oil. Actually, it's made out of plastic. So um, yeah, I just, I, I, you know, I think it, it, it's, as you talked about the prices over the last 30 days, I want to revisit, 
you know, it's important for us to remember, you know, $24 silver, not great. But when we look at it through the lens of maybe the last five years, pretty good. Gold is darn near at all time high. I mean, why is everybody walking around in the gold sector and, and especially the precious metals mining sector? I mean, it's like uh, people are just like depressed. It's, and, and you're hearing this from everywhere, any, any, any way that you can quantify or measure sentiment or feeling, everybody's just kind of like, oh, it's, you know, it's as bad as I've seen. It's like, how can that be when you've got gold right there near an all time high? Exactly. And, um, you know, I like to make point this out too. you know, people, you know, think they're going to go drop a bunch of cash on silver and gold all at one time. No, it's called cost averaging. That's what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not taking, you know, if, if people have, let's say, I'm just going to throw a number out there on 500 bucks. Okay. You don't need to spend that all at one time. If you have a local coin shop and I'll go into a little bit more about coin shops after I say this. Um, you know, spend a hundred dollars one week. Go back to next week. That's how you cost average everything out. You know, you see a little bit of a dip one one day. Go in there and get your hundred dollars worth. Wait another week. See what it does. You see a little bit more of a dip. It goes up, then comes back down. Where right about where you bought it last time. Go get some more. That's how we cost average. This is how we get the cheapest silver. For the bang for the buck. And you that's like how that I'm bang. You like that bang for the buck, don't you? You, you know, and it, it, I see a lot of comments out there. All oh, coin shops rip you off. Coin shop. Well, I'm gonna, uh, you know, I talk to four different coin shops throughout the country today, Ron. Mm -hmm. One is one is going out of business. You know, a lot of coin shops are going out of business because they are older men, and I I hate to say it that way, but most coin shop owners are older people. And they don't have relatives or someone to take the over, over the shop. The insurance is going sky high everywhere. Commercial, you know, if they don't own the shop outright and they're renting the building, you know, rent's going up on these coin shops. You, you know, one is, and another reason why a lot of shops may not have it, they're, they're waiting for the dips. I don't mm -hmm. think we're going to see major dips. I don't think we're going to see $18, $20 silver anytime soon. Could it happen? Absolutely, Ron. Yeah. Um, you know, people are, some coin shops are buying from their bone dealers no matter what the price is. That's why they have him with inventory. And a shop I talked to today is only buying what's walking in the door. Hmm. So, I mean, so if, so if you're buying, if you're going into, I hate to use the word buy, transfer you money ask what the coin shop will buy it for and what will they sell it for i think the word you were looking for is convert convert <laughs> yeah well ron you know it, you, it's friday night and i you know i'm not making excuses but i've been sick this past week so i I'm know you have I, I'm gonna, you're I'm doing you're, my excuse this week no no you're you're great and uh, and, so, and on behalf of all the viewers thank you because yes you aren't, we, you know, we aren't selling anybody anything. We don't have any links. You're giving this information out of the kindness of your heart. I want to touch on something that you talked about when you said you talked to all these coin shops um, and that one of them said uh, they were waiting, right? They were waiting for the dip. I've, I've said this before. I think it's the case right now. I think you've got a lot of people out there when it comes to precious metals that are watching that are watching. And like I talked about earlier, when that gold gets to 2,200 and sentiment improves, or when if silver gets up above, let's say 28, 29, that we're gonna have not only higher prices, but even a bigger rush of people who at that point are gonna have FOMO, I hate to use that term, but that fear of missing out and, and that we could see like a double, you know, a double turbo boost for lack of a better way to say it. Uh, to really propel the prices higher. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm blindly optimistic, but I just, I, I really think that's the case. And I think when you look at the big picture of what's going on out there with the economy, with the monetary and fiscal situation here in the United States, I mean, what a cluster bomb that is, right? We won't even get into that. Our old friend Jerome Powell and Janet Yellen, blah, blah. Um, right. That the, that the table set, 
for, you know, fundamentally for higher prices. You know, it's been frustrating. Um, Stuart Angler last week, and I talked to him, I thought it was great. I was, you know, I was talking about the the COMEX or the LBMA breaking, like the price of silver really getting, silver in particular, really getting recognized. And he said, I've been waiting for 15 years. <laughs> you know, so I don't think yeah. we have another 15 years ahead of us. I really you know, don't. You know, and with these coin shops waiting for these dips, you know, they might, you know, yeah, we might wake up one day, three months from now, and it, it dips down to 21, you know, 20 bucks. Right. The question is, are you going to be able to find it? Are you going to be able to get your yeah. hands on it at that point? And what yeah. are the premiums going to be? I mean, just because it dips down to 20 bucks, you know, a round could go to shooting to $8 over and you're still paying the same price you did today. Yeah. And, and the coin, the coin, the coin shops could be in a real pickle too, because if prices shoot up to, you know, $27, $28, and you know how it works with silver, people buy more the higher the price goes those coin shops are going to be sitting with little inventory and, uh, and, and, and in a pretty desperate situation to make purchases from their wholesalers or from wherever they're getting it, uh, you know, that could drive the price and the premium substantially higher. It, it could, it could have effect on both, on both ways, Ron, um, yep. goes up. I mean, you know, I mean, I remember when we had the cough cough run, there was a very little inventory out, out there. The premiums mm -hmm. were a little bit higher than they are now. The premiums have right. backed up just a tad right now. Mm -hmm. But when you can't get stuff and, and people want it, 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 it's like the toilet paper scare. Everybody rushed out to get toilet paper. Right. Um, you know, it's called supply and demand at that point. Um, that's why I say cost average, you know, you know, if you have a local trusted coin shop and you got a certain amount of um, funds, get some every week. It, it don't yeah. matter if it's two, two or three ounces here and there. I mean, cost averages it out and and you, you'll be happy you did later on. Yep, yep. Thank you, Coin Shop Chris. It's been great talking to you. We'll look forward to see, hearing from you next week. And on behalf of all the viewers, Thank you for generously giving us your time and uh, your expertise and uh, your support and friendship. Well, and I, I'd like to thank you, Ryan. I mean, you, you know, Susie puts up a lot with you by doing this and, you know, she's great at doing all the um, background, you know, on, on the videos and stuff like that. Um, you know, she really needs to be called out too. I mean, she's, she's really awesome. You know, I love all the little um, doodads she put on our video last week here. Um, well, maybe maybe yeah. if you're extra nice to her, she'll put doodads on this one for you as well, Chris. Well, tell, tell, tell her I'll bring her a cu cup of coffee. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, every, and, 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 you know, really, truly, without Susie, there would be no Ron's basement because she's the one who keeps me locked down here all the time. Right. You know? <laughs> well, she only lets you out of the basement when, when you take the girls somewhere or you're going actually to your real to your real job. I already cleaned the cat litter. <laughs> <laughs> see you, buddy. We'll, well, we'll talk you to you soon. Job. See you, buddy. Bye-bye.